Hello, this is Jordan, and this video is being recorded on Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to posit the question, what happens after the Fed hikes rates? Now, I know that some of you will say, oh, the Fed's not going to hike. But if you look at the Fed Fund's futures, yesterday, there was a 66% chance of a hike in March. And now after the Fed, I think we're accepting, or at least the market is accepting, there's going to be three rate hikes next year. So the Fed is going to hike. Uh, that is the overwhelming probability at this point in precious metals their uh, weakness is reflecting that as they typically do they typically perform poorly right before the start of rate hike cycles and that's where we are and so in this chart i have gold against the stock market at the top and we have gold s p and at the very bottom we have the fed funds rate and in red i annotated how long the hiking cycle was now the first thing to note is and we're, we're looking here at just the last 30 years so obviously the hike cycles in the 70s were different uh, the 80s as well the 70s you had rising inflation the 80s you had high inflation but falling inflation and for the last 30 years you've had you've tended to have disinflation except for the 2000s it was a little different then but for the most part uh, the last four cycles, I think, are important to focus on and can give us uh, some indications of what we might be able to expect uh, from this hiking cycle. And so starting off with gold against the stock market, I, I mark it there in yellow. And it's very interesting. Um, during these rate hike cycles, you can see that even in, if you look at 94 to 95, 98 to 99, and most of 2016 to 2018, um, gold, that ratio sort of went sideways. And for the most part, I mean, gold was only in a rip-roaring bull market in the mid-2000s. So three of the other four times, uh, gold was not really in a secular bull market, and the ratio went sideways. So... That should tell us something. Even in, uh, even in some scenarios where gold isn't really in full-blown bull market mode, uh, it's not going to dramatically underperform the stock market. And we do know that gold typically has a strong rebound when the Fed starts hiking rates. I mean, except for 94 to 95, the rebound in gold occurred before the Fed started hiking rates, but even after, you know, gold had a decline before the rate hike, and then it had a bit of a rebound right before the rate hike, and then it went sideways after the Fed hiked. But nevertheless, uh, that's what we're expecting. So the a after the first rate hike next year, gold should outperform the stock market. Uh, we already know that. Uh, with respect to the, uh, because gold is likely to have a big rebound in the second half of the year. Or if the Fed hikes in March, you know, gold could have a big rebound uh, through the fall. Next, um, let's talk about uh, the stock market and the length of these, re uh, these recent rate hike cycles. Um, it's interesting because if you look at the mid-90s, that's the only time the Fed really engineered a soft landing. I mean, they, they sort of tried to do that in the mid-2000s, but it didn't really work. You had all these problems in uh, housing and with the banks. Those started coming up end of 06 into 07. So even though the stock market and the economy kept going for another year, it wasn't really a, a soft landing. Of course, even though all the pundits were saying so. And if we look at, uh, so if we look at, you know, the, the cycle in 99 to 2000 and then 2017 to 2018, you know, those hiking cycles, they, the market basically peaked 
before they ended. So things were starting to get worrisome. Things were starting to roll over and the Fed had to stop and very quickly go to rate cuts. So that was different in the mid 2000s. Uh, they had to wait about uh, a year or so before they had to go to rate cuts and then aggressively do so. And in the mid nineties, you know, when they went to, they were able to go to rate huck rate, excuse me, rate cuts. That's when the market really started to take off. And so as far as what's going to happen with this rate hike cycle, so we know the beginning of it, we're likely to see a big rebound in gold and silver, but and you know, call it for four, five, six, seven months, something like that. That's what the data says. But the real question is what happens after that? And that is going to be determined by what happens at the end of 22 and 2023. Are we going to see disinflation where inflation is coming down? And it continues to decline. It declines to 4%, 3%, 2%. You know, commodities decline and they're correcting the oil price, uh, which is a huge driver of inflation. That's peaked and that's going down. Or are we going to get into a situation where, yes, inflation is coming down temporarily, but we get to the end of next year uh, you know, because of the lack of fiscal stimulus next year, uh, because of other factors, the economy is going to soften and, you know, potentially there's a threat of even a technical recession. And from that point, you know, that forces lawmakers across the board to pass through more stimulus or UBI, whatever. We know that some infrastructure money is going to hit in 23 rather than 22. So, I mean, that that's one scenario in 23 where you could get a reflation, you go back to an inflationary regime, and that's when, like the 70s, gold is going up because the Fed has to hike rates. So that, you know, that that's obviously a very bullish scenario for gold. The other scenario, disinflation, uh, then the Fed does, you know, they don't really have, they can just hike slow, they do baby hikes, uh, you know, much like they did in 2017, 2018. Uh, and in that type of scenario, you know, gold and silver are probably going to consolidate after they have a big rebound after the first hike. And so what that could entail for gold is gold has this big rebound next year where based on the average percentages, it rallies back to 2000. And then if we're in disinflation mode from that point on, then you have uh, gold doing a bullish consolidation. It's continuing to consolidate. It sets up the handle. And eventually when uh, the Fed can't hike rates anymore and the stock market is done in that scenario, uh, that's when gold has a massive breakout above 2100. And so that's another, you know, that's, you, you also have to keep in mind uh, the stock market and a lot of gold bugs and gold bulls, they just assume with like one rate hike, everything's going to fall apart. We're going to get a full blown recession. I really don't see that happening. Yes, it's possible we could have a 15% correction in the S and P. But if you look at the history, I mean, look at where the stock market peaked. They started hiking in, at the end of 2015, but I really call it the end of 2016 uh, because that's when the Fed start. They could continue hiking, and it was basically you know that cycle lasted two years. I mean, the market when the the Fed started hiking end of 16, the market rallied for over a year and a half. You look at the mid 2000s. I mean the the mark. I mean the the problems didn't start coming about until 2007, and so that was you know two and a half plus years f after the Fed started hiking. I mean 99 to 2000 that was uh, one year after the Fed started hiking. So I don't see the stock market 
making a major peak next year. And and I don't see us rolling over into a bear market. Correction, yes. But based on the history, you probably would expect the stock market to at least rise for another year or so after the Fed starts hiking. So that puts us into uh, 2023 for a potential stock, you know, two years is 2024. So, you know, end of 23, maybe early 24, you know, based on this history, that's around the time the stock market could potentially peak and you have the threat of a full-blown bear market. Is that going to be because there's really low growth, not enough stimulus, or is that going to be because we have this big reflation in 23 and then we have stagflation and things get out of control. And because of the inflation, the stock market rolls over and precious metals are doing well. So in, in either scenario, I mean, gold is set up to have this massive super bullish breakout. But the question is, how are we going to get there? And when might that happen? And that's going to depend on the rate hike cycle, the economy and the inflation versus disinflation and what the outcome will be. But you know, circling back to the present, the next year, I think there's a potential for a 15 to 20% decline in the stock market, strong potential for Fed rate hike. So either way, I think we're going to see a very big rebound in gold and silver, unfortunately from lower levels than where we are right now. But um, we still should be trading higher than where we are Uh, right now 12 months from now so that's my view obviously there's a lot of hypotheticals here but that's what we should be thinking about uh, next year really is is what's going to happen this rate hike cycle are we going to continue to see inflation after that or are we going to see disinflation where inflation just continues to slowly decline and we get slow growth and uh, in that scenario you know you'd have silver would underperform gold would consolidate and then that would be after the big rebound from the rate hike so that's where we think we are sorry for rambling on but that's all i have in this video hope you enjoyed it check out everything at thedailygold.com leave a comment let me know what you guys think and i'll talk to you again in the next video